Good afternoon. Well, the life changes we've all endured in the last several months have been enormous, and um, and it, it impacted this event uh, uh, as well. In the past, the few agings at altitude seminars and expos that we've had um, were held live at the Jewish Community Center in Boulder. This year, for the very first time, uh, we're hosting a virtual expo and webinar series. My name is Al Manz, I'm the president and CEO for Prairie Mountain Media and publisher for the camera and the moderator for today's event. I'd like to welcome everyone to today's webinar, our eighth in the series entitled Cannabis for Aging. Before I turn it over to today's presenters, um, please notice the Q&A uh, and chat boxes on the bottom of your device screen. Um, you can ask questions anytime during this session uh, and they will build up as well as the chat, uh, whether it's Q&A or chat. And uh, when we get to the end of the 40 minute presentation by our presenters today, we'll have about 20 minutes uh, for questions and answers. And I already know that this will be a very active question and answer session. Um, before we get started, I'd like to remind everybody that they can go to dailycamera.com backslash aging to actually go and see our virtual expo and see who all of our partners are and uh, support their organizations. Now let's get started. Our presenters for today's session will be Dr. Dave Gordon from LEAF 411 and Penny Combs from Terrapin Care Station. Our first speaker will be Dave Gordon, so I'll turn it over to Dave. Uh, thank you very much. I'm excited to be part of this uh, wonderful two weeks of lectures and I appreciate uh, the Daily Camera and Al for making this happen and be accessible to so many, so many people. I'm gonna try to share my screen here. I think we're good. Once again, my name is Dr. Dave Gordon. I'm an internist based out of Denver. I've been helping patients use cannabis as part of their health and wellness routine for about 10 years. Hope to share some of what I've learned over the years with you guys today on this extremely important and popular topic. If you're interested in cannabis treatment, you're not alone. Cannabis use amongst those 65 and older has increased by almost 200% from 2015 to 2015, and it continues to grow. Seniors are the, currently the fastest growing group interested in and using cannabis. And that's no surprise. Seniors want to thrive and live active, vibrant lives. Often, a variety of chronic diseases and symptoms get in the way. And frequently, the solutions they've been offered don't work well and come with a long list of side effects. Seniors are looking for better health and wellness solutions, and cannabis can be a part of that. Cannabis can be a controversial topic. So much of that controversy is due to the decades of propaganda and misinformation that we've all incorporated. There are many myths about cannabis that are simply not true. It's led to a stigma against the use cannabis and may prevent someone from otherwise trying an effective treatment. My goal today is to teach you what we know about this plant and hopefully dispel some of these common myths. The first myth is that cannabis use for health is just a new fad. Actually, cannabis has been used as a medicine for thousands of years. Chinese physicians first wrote about medical cannabis over 5,000 years ago, and it was used in Greece, Rome, India, and throughout the Middle East in ancient times. Even more recently, cannabis was a staple in medicine. Queen Victoria's doctor regularly treated her with cannabis. In the United States, throughout the late 1800s and early 1900s, doctors always carried cannabis medicines in their black bags as they did house calls. In fact, in 1937, the American Medical Association argued vehemently against cannabis prohibition. Though unfortunately, the arguments went in vain and cannabis prohibition still occurred. Another common myth is we don't know how cannabis works. It's often discussed as some mysterious elixir that's never been studied. In reality, the cannabis plant and our body's own cannabis system are extensively researched. And by the way, if you didn't catch that last phrase, you heard me correctly. I said our body's own cannabis system. We have an internal cannabis system called the endocannabinoid system. This endocannabinoid system's job is to provide balance in our bodies. It's through this endocannabinoid system where cannabis works, helping to balance and stabilize us. 
So let's talk about the cannabis plant and the compounds it contains. Knowing details here is important because it can help you select products that are best for you. It's also important to help dispel another myth that all cannabis products are the same, whereas that couldn't be further from the truth. Cannabis is a plant that contains lots of different things. We often only focus on two of them, CBD and THC, because they are the most common, but there are other compounds in the plant as well. What makes one cannabis product different than another is how these various medicines are combined and in what amounts. In general, we see better results when we use a combination of these different medicines because they work synergistically. We call this the entourage effect. Real briefly, I wanna to touch on some terminology. I've been using the term cannabis, but you'll also hear people use the words marijuana and hemp. Cannabis is a plant, but there could be many types of that plant. The types might differ in how they look, how they grow, and what medicines they contain. Hemp and marijuana are just types of cannabis. When a cannabis plant contains below a certain amount of THC, we call it hemp. When that cannabis plant contains above the specific amount of THC, we call it marijuana. But remember, both marijuana and hemp are still cannabis, and it's the combinations and amounts of the various medications and the product that are important, not so much the name. Probably the most important distinction between hemp and marijuana products are the regulations. Marijuana products are tightly regulated, whereas hemp products have really no regulation. For those new to cannabis, I recommend purchasing from a dispensary where you can be more confident with product quality. THC is the most famous medicine in the cannabis plant and the most controversial. THC has many health and wellness benefits because it directly stimulates our endocannabinoid system. It's been shown to help pain, sleep, mood, appetite, nausea, inflammation, and many other symptoms. THC is also the compound that if taken in large enough amounts can cause us to be intoxicated or impaired, commonly known as being high. While some people want this effect, many people do not. But let's destroy another myth here. Just because you're using THC doesn't mean you're getting high. I'll repeat that. Small amounts of THC do not cause you to be high. These small amounts of THC, however, can still be very valuable. Thus, we typically want at least a little THC in our product to get the maximal benefit. When using THC, the dose is important and we always start low. Over time, patients often increase THC to get the experience of mild intoxication because that's typically described as a feeling of increased pleasure and happiness, something that's very valuable for those dealing with chronic pain or depression or just for a general sense of well-being. CBD gets a lot of publicity these days. It's popular because it doesn't have the potential to cause impairment or getting high. It also has many valuable health and wellness properties. It helps our own endocannabinoid system work better rather than directly stimulating it like THC. And it also works in other areas of the body. It's especially valuable in treating pain, inflammation, and anxiety. CBD is a valuable tool, but remember, it's just one medicine in the cannabis plant and typically works best when combined with THC and the other compounds in the plant. That being said, for those new to cannabis, products that contain mostly CBD are a great place to start. This is a good time to touch on some issues regarding cannabis and other medications. The average senior takes five or more medications daily. Those medications commonly interact with each other, and they also interact with the compounds in cannabis, most commonly CBD. Now, while these interactions exist, they typically are not a problem, especially at the dosages we usually use. However, if you're taking blood thinners, seizure medicines, or certain antibiotics, to treat fungal infections, interactions can be more of an issue. Also, while cannabis is not specifically used to treat high blood pressure or diabetes, we often see patients have better control of their blood pressure or blood sugar when they're using cannabis. 
So if you're taking prescriptions to treat those conditions, you should follow your levels closely and work with your doctor to lower your medication dose if necessary. The bottom line is that cannabis is safe for nearly anyone to try, but if you take multiple medications or have lots of health problems, it's a good idea to speak with a medical professional first. While I don't have time today to explain this slide in detail, I want to introduce you to two terms, dose and ratio. The dose is the actual milligrams of the specific medicine, like CBD or THC. The ratio is the balance between CBD and THC. Both are important, and cannabis products are labeled with this information. High CBD products have little to no potential to cause intoxication, and we dose them by the amount of CBD. Alternatively, we dose balanced and high THC products by the THC amount, typically starting with about 2.5 milligrams or less, and then increasing as needed. Remember, regardless of which product you use, if you start low enough uh, with a low enough dose of THC, again, less than two and a half milligrams, you're not likely to feel intoxicated. And also remember, mild intoxication is not always a bad thing, especially for those dealing with pain, trauma, depression, or for those just wanting some increased pleasure and happiness out of life. In time, most patients can reach the ideal spot on the intoxication spectrum. Educating yourself and spending time talking to the dispensary employee in a place like Joya can help you make the right choice. Hopefully I've convinced you that cannabis is not a one size fits all approach. To drive that point home further, in addition to the variety of different compounds that are in cannabis, there are also many different ways to get cannabis in your body. I'm gonna to touch briefly on two routes that are excellent for cannabis newbies. However, remember there's not really a best method. Each of the different routes of, of administration have pros and cons for different symptoms and your individual goals. Topical cannabis therapy is a great place to start. If you have a body part you can point to or press on that hurts, the cannabis topical might help. They are extremely safe and when used appropriately have zero chance of causing intoxication. They work locally on nerves and inflammation just on or underneath the skin. For many patients, topical products are all they need to get great relief. The next group of products are ingestibles. These include sprays, tinctures, pills, and edible products, anything you eventually swallow. There are tons of options and it can be overwhelming. However, I think you can narrow your choices by using products that have a health-focused design. This means the product is easy to use at a low dose, has reliable absorption, and avoids unnecessary sugars or other toxic additives. Ingestible products are the most common options used by seniors. They can start working in as little as 30 minutes, but often take up to two hours to show effects. That's why when using ingested products, you always wait several hours before redosing if you're not seeing effects. Your dispensary workers, as well as any cannabis trained medical professional, can help you understand the difference between the various ingestible products and help you find the right fit. So is there any proof cannabis works? Absolutely. So let's dispel another myth. This myth I hear a lot from my medical colleagues. Common statements are, well, there's no data on cannabis or there's no proof that cannabis works. And frankly, I disagree. We don't have time today to go through all the research, but I'd like to briefly touch on how I approach this issue, not just with cannabis medicine, but with any medicine or therapy I might consider for a patient. I use what's called evidence-based medicine. This means I use a three-pronged approach. First, I look at all the current best available science on the treatment. This includes how the treatment works in the body, as well as the studies investigating that therapy. But again, this is just one of the three parts. Next, I look at what the patient experiences with the treatment. This includes how other patients have responded to the treatment, as well as the goals and the values of the individual with whom I'm working. And finally, I use my clinical experience. In over 20 years of practice, I've seen what works and what doesn't, 
And that experience is part of my decision making. So when I look at cannabis therapy through an evidence-based medicine lens, I absolutely feel comfortable recommending its use. Conveniently, many of the symptoms seniors suffer from are the same things we find cannabis helping. There's no one size fits all approach, and it often takes time to find the right product with the right dose and ratio of compounds. Remember, cannabis works on our own endocannabinoid system to provide balance throughout the body. So whether you're attempting to treat a specific symptom or just create an improved sense of well-being, it's something to consider. We also have to think about cannabis in the context of the alternatives we're currently using for symptoms, which is typically a lot of prescription medication. Cannabis has the potential to replace many common medications. For many patients, rather than take a separate pill for every symptom, they'd rather use a plant medicine that could treat many of their symptoms at once with minimal side effects and be more personalized to their needs. My clinical experience and much of the research on those using cannabis suggest it's a safer and more effective option for many issues. Now, again, we all wanna minimize our prescription use, but one warning, please don't stop any prescriptions without first consulting the doctor that prescribed it. Despite how valuable I think cannabis can be, remember, it's not a magic bullet for all your problems. It's just one piece of a comprehensive approach to health. While research has proven cannabis is not a gateway to more dangerous substances, I still consider cannabis a gateway, but rather one to a more personalized, holistic approach to care, one that looks at all aspects of health, or what I call the four pillars, food, movement, relaxation, and community. If you haven't listened to Drs. Rusk and Henry's talk from last week, please do so. Whether you're interested in brain health or another chronic condition, or just living the healthiest life you can, the lessons and recommendations in that talk are imperative to use alongside cannabis or any other therapy you choose. I wanna summarize before we finish up this brief overview. Hopefully I've dispelled some common myths about cannabis. The plant has been used for thousands of years and works by interacting with our own cannabis system, the endocannabinoid system. Cannabis is not one medicine, but rather a plant that contains many different medicines that often work best in combination. THC and CBD are the most common medicines, and finding the optimal dose and ratio of those compounds is key for success. If you're new to cannabis, consider starting with topicals or ingestible products with a medically focused design. Cannabis medicines are not risk-free, but when used appropriately, can be and effective for a variety of symptoms or just improved well-being. Remember, it can take time to find the right regimen and best products for you. Educate yourself and be okay with that process. Cannabis is not a one-size-fits-all therapy. Most importantly, please focus on the four pillars of health, food, movement, relaxation, and community. Long-term success is impossible without those. Now, is this you? Despite my best efforts, this is exactly what you're thinking right now. So thank, thank some answers for that. First, dispensaries are not just places to buy products. They're great educational resources. For example, at a Joya dispensary, you can meet one-on-one -on -one with the sales consultant, either by video call or in person at the store to discuss your goals and the various product options. They can focus on your needs as an individual, to help make cannabis accessible as a wellness tool. Also, if you're interested in using cannabis, please burn this name into your memory, LEAF 411. LEAF 411 is a nonprofit that provides free education by cannabis trained nurses. Call the hotline to speak with a nurse that can either answer your question or direct you to someone that can. It's a free, anonymous, trusted source to help you on your journey. Knowledge is power, especially when it comes to your health. The most educated patients have the best outcomes, and this is a great resource for anyone considering cannabis medicine. Thank you so much. I'll be excited to answer your questions in a little bit, and I'll let you move on to the next speaker.
Hi, everybody. My name is Penny Comez, and I'm uh, going to talk to you guys today about um, some specific cannabinoids and the potential health benefits that you could see um, from utilizing them. Let's get started. Right, I'm gonna to stick to my script. Um, like I said, I'm gonna go into more specific cannabinoids throughout this presentation. Uh, my name is Penny Comez. I have a master's in public health. I currently work with Terrapin Care Station. We are a, a medical and recreational um, dispensary. We have six locations throughout the front range. I currently work as their internal communications manager, but I have my master's in public health and have been extensively involved in um, cannabis education um, for about the past five years. So I'm really excited to bring this topic to you guys today. So, like I said, I have been really involved with cannabis education for about the past five years. Um, when I started my master's in public health program, um, it led to this question over and over again from my professional peers, from some of my professors and uh, from my parents the most. Um, they were curious as to why I was so interested in educating about cannabis in particular. Um, my cannabis journey kind of began um, in 2014. I moved to Washington, D.C. within the midst of their um, decriminalization of cannabis um, campaign throughout the city. Um, I joined the group, the National Organization for Reform of Marijuana Laws, um, just because I, was, I wanted people to have the choice. Um, I think that people should be able to have all the tools available to um, have the maximum amount of wellness in their life. And when I joined that organization, I not only learned so much about this amazing plant, um, I heard story after story um, of, of people who had received wellness benefits from cannabis. And then it made me curious as to why we have grown up in this culture. You know, a lot, I've, we've received some questions already. You know, we all grew up with just say no. Um, we've grown up with the assumption that, you know, there are no positive benefits to cannabis, but rather negative consequences. Um, but if you look at the history of the research um, base of cannabis, the United States have, has made it um, close to impossible to study it here. So of course there is the assumption that because it's not being studied here, that it's not being studied everywhere else, but there are a, a lot of universities throughout the globe um, that are studying cannabis and cannabinoids very extensively all year round. Um, so I will show you my sources at the end of this presentation, but um, I just wanted to clarify why I am so passionate about this particular topic um, today. All right, and so I wanted to just outline some health issues prevalent um, in the aging population, as well as some um, demographic patterns that we're seeing with the aging population here in Colorado. Um, as you can read, these are the most, uh, these are some of the most common chronic illnesses that um, the aging population will experience. Um, kind of like Dr. Gordon's um, four pillars, um, I, I kind of place it all under the umbrellas of mood, pain, and sleep. So that's kind of how I have framed this presentation um, with those three pillars of my own. Um, and then in, I got this um, information from the state demographer's office. As you can see, the population of, um, of of aging people is is growing in Colorado, um, which is awesome. Um, and you know they are getting more curious about cannabis because it is pretty normalized here. Not it's not 100, percent but um, I think that it's really important for people in the aging population to be educated about these things that could be a potential tool for your wellness. Because as the population grows, you know we are in in the same uh, healthcare system, I know how difficult it can be sometimes to get in with specialists or get in with your primary care physician. So if you have another wellness tool that can kind of tide you over until you're able to speak with a medical professional, I really think that it's great to have that option and to be as educated as possible about these topics. So what exactly are cannabinoids? I know that uh, Dr. Gordon also touched on this a little bit. Um, this. Uh, definition is from the education website Leafly. Um, it says that cannabinoids are a class of chemical co compounds um, that derive from hemp and cannabis plants. They interact directly with your endocannabinoid system. And I just want to repeat because I think it's very interesting and very important. Um, we all have endocannabinoid systems. Your body is primed to, to take in these kinds, the, these cannabinoids. Uh, it helps you feel balanced. It helps you reach homeostasis. Um, I just think that it's it's very important to repeat that you have this system that is ready to, to take up cannabinoids. Um, additionally, um, 
I, it's cool that there are 113 cannabinoids that have been discovered, but there are apparently sev several more that um, are being discovered, you know, every day. Um, the Hebrew University in Jerusalem um, is kind of the leader in that kind of research, and they're who I kind of pull um, a lot of my research from. Again, I will provide the source information at the end of this presentation. So um, we have already talked about cannabidiol, CBD. It, it is just the hottest um, cannabinoid of the time. Um, as far as what potential health benefits are, um, I see the most potential benefit for both pain and mood. Um, so pain management, I personally use um, CBD every single day because I have a muscle dysfunction um, that causes like intense muscle spasms. You know, I was going to say, I, I really do use all of our products. Um, so some ways that you can ingest CBD, as uh, Dr. Gordon kind of explained earlier, there are tinctures. Um, I personally use a tincture every single day. Um, you have this, these topical products such as salves and um, lotions. You can also find CBD bath bombs now, which I think is incredibly cool. Um, you can also find concentrated um, CBD, isolated CBD. Um, and you can also just find regular old cannabis strains, just the flower plant that will have a high con higher concentration of CBD. Your bud tender, if you go to a dispensary, will always be able to find the information about what um, dosage of CBD and the ratio that you'll get um, in, in any product that you'll um, try to check out. Um, Cannab cannabinol, um, CVN is another very popular um, cannabinoid that um, we speak about. Uh, we have received one question prior to this presentation about um, sleep, sleep aid um, in particular. And CVN, um, there is promising research that it is a very helpful sleep aid. Um, it's another really amazing benefit is that it's been shown to be a neuroprotectant. So if you have a neurodegenerative illness, such as like ALS, it won't heal you, but it might help, might help you deal with the symptoms of those degenerative illnesses a little bit better, which I think is incredible. Um, it also, we've also found that um, strains with higher amounts of CBN will be helpful in stimulating the appetite. So if you, are, you or somebody you know is going through chemotherapy, something that um, has stopped their appetite, um, CBN strains and CBN products are, have been really helpful, um, research has shown, in in stimulating the appetite. Um, it, so really with that umbrella, it's we found um, that pain and sleep um, are really covered by CBN products. Some CBN products that um, do exist include tinctures, um, vaporized concentrates, like again, you can isolate the C, uh, CBN. Um, and I know a lot of people who use, in particular, transdermal patches. Um, we have those at Terrapin Care Station. Um, I know a lot of people will just grab CBN patches. It's a little bit like a nicotine patch, and they will put it at, on the bottom of their foot before they go to bed. And they have very, um, they have had really great results as far as having a deeper sleep, um, just just a better experience falling asleep as well. And then this last one is cannabigerol, um, CBG. It's one of the newer, um, they're, they're studying the benefits of this. Um, and so there's a little bit less research, but the research that they do have is pointing to very uh, specific physiological systems that are affected by, um, by CBG and can be very helpful for very specific um, things. So like um, glaucoma relief, uh, as you see here. Um, it also has been really um, successful so far in trials um, of MRSA infections. Um, its antibacterial um, properties have been very, it's, it's, uh, the, prom the research is very promising, which I think is very incredible. Um, again, some CPG products that you might be able to find at your local dispensary um, or, or head shops sometimes. You can find isolated CBG at this point. Um, you can also find topicals. Uh, I've also seen some capsules that um, you just take like a regular pill and apparently it has very high CBG content and um, people are having great success with those kinds of products as well. So again, Dr. Gordon uh, touched on this topic earlier. Um, the entourage effect implies um, that CBD, uh, you know, CBN and CBG, um, you can get isolated cannabinoids, 
but it will bind better to your ECS that you do have if you your endocannabinoid system um, if you do take it in tandem with other cannabinoids. And um, this is important because I, I think that um, usually when you see these trending CBD and CBD uh, in your gas station and your King Supers, you're finding isolated product. Um, and so you might not see the benefit. It's really easy for somebody who has bought um, a, C a CBD product off the shelf at King Supers. If they don't see a benefit, then they buy it off CBD as a whole without really understanding that without other cannabinoids, you might not be seeing the wellness benefits um, that, that you should be seeing or that you could be seeing if you used it in tandem with other things. And this also leads me to the point where um, also with, with uh, things that you will find in your King Supers or on your grocery store, you might not be able to access the testing um, the testing results of these products. You know, you, you can't necessarily always guarantee that what you are getting is fully CBD. Um, I know myself, I, um, I have bought CBD and it just made me fall asleep and it became really clear that it was just serotonin or not serotonin, uh, melatonin because it helped me sleep, but it wasn't helping my muscle spasms. So it's always really good if you are trying to educate yourself and if you are trying to to uh, test products um, to go to a dispensary because we are a high compliance industry. We, ha we have to test our products very extensively and we have to allow our consumers to see that those testing results. So I would always recommend if you are trying out um, cannabis in your wellness routine, I absolutely recommend checking out a dispensary. And that brings me to this slide. Um, uh, Terrapin Care Station, we have six locations throughout the Front Range, as you can see here. Um, they are all adult use, um, recreational, so you don't need a medical card to come visit us, though our Manhattan location does have both recreational and medical options. We have very knowledgeable about tenders. We, we ensure that um, they are getting all of this health information um, as, as even I receive it. So um, they are very knowledgeable and they really, really enjoy helping people find products that work for them. Um, you know, it might take a couple trips, but, but you can always find um, people that can give you other options. Um, I just wanted to pop this on the screen because um, I love educating about cannabis. Uh, it's a topic that um, is very close to my heart and has been very helpful in my own wellness routine. So I wanted to place this contact information here. Um, there is my email address. You can also visit terrapincarestation.com to see all of the products that we offer um, if you want to try specific things. And then I also I just wanted to leave you with some educational resources. I have either worked with or uh, for a, a lot of these organization. So uh, Hemsley is more of the 101 if you want to learn a little bit more about your endocannabinoid system in general. Um, they, they are really helpful. They're Missouri-based and Missouri just legalized their medical program. So they really have that 101 um, content on lock. Um, Mary's Medicinals, um, they're actually a cannabis brand and we carry them at Terrapin Care Station. Um, again, I use their products and they also have very um, good research on their website. And then as far as academic materials and what I really pulled a lot of the information from this particular uh, presentation for, um, Hebrew University in Jerusalem, as I had said earlier, um, they kind of are the lead leading the conversation on specific cannabinoids. So if you ever want to look at the high level science type um, articles, then you can definitely check them out. But again, if you don't want to do that research, I can, I, I will always do it for you. I, I very much love this topic. And that's all I have for you guys today. Penny and Dave, uh, Dr. Gordon, uh, Penny, I mispronounced your name, Comus, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, uh, I wanna thank both of you, you did a, a terrific job. I'm also gonna uh, welcome Martha Lucas. Um, Martha is with Ajoya, and uh, she will be part of our question and answer uh, uh, session as well. She'll need to unmute her, uh, her speaker, but um, we welcome her. So let me get started with the questions, and I'm glad because we actually have a few more, a few extra minutes in this session for questions. Um, uh, the first question was, what is your comment source, 55 and older use, use 20, 
200% higher. I guess that's for, for Dave, uh, Do Dr. Gordon. Yeah, I, I think there, so I have a slide at the beginning talking about seniors using cannabis. I think it was actually 65 and over, <clears throat> um, showing almost 200% increase in use. This is a study from, it was published earlier this year in the JAMA Journal, American Medical Association, their internal medicine um, journal. And it's basically from a national uh, US survey, just looking at substance use. And so uh, the percentage of seniors using cannabis has increased way back 2006 to less than 1%. Now in this study from 2015 to 2018, um, from just over 2% to just over 4%, I think the exact uh, number was about 175% increase. And again, our numbers seem to be going up from there. So it, it was a study in, in JAMA internal medicine from earlier this year. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks. This is a question that maybe maybe you all can address. Um, cannabis for sleep. Um, this uh, individual has tried Stratos Sleep Indica THC, which is expensive. It didn't seem to help. He also uh, tried Stratos Sleep 1.1 uh, tincture, um, which he sell, said helped for, uh, or she said helped for a few months. Um, can you talk about cannabis and sleep and should it be a, a CBD product? Should be, should, does the THC help in this case um, uh, as well? And, and what varieties might be the best options for, uh, for improving sleep? And, and Dr. Gordon, you can start and then and we'll just go down the line to Penny and then Martha. Sure. Um, well, as I first I'll mention, I'm always going to be a broken record on this. You never want to just rely on a product of any type, prescription or otherwise. Uh, if, if sleep's an issue, there might be a lot of other things, but I'll leave that aside for the moment. So when it comes to cannabis, there's, again, certainly not a best product. The majority of patients typically use THC, especially those from plants that are labeled as what we call indica plants. Indica plants have essential oils in them that tend to be more sedative um, and so help with relaxation and sedation. So when you'll see an indica label on a product, that means in addition to THC, it has other essential oils that are good for sedation. So often people will use a THC product that has a more indica lean to it. That's when the patient mentioned they use Strato Sleep. That's kind of a product like that. A lot of patients are using more, Penny mentioned CBN, um, CBN is a non-intoxicating uh, cannabis compound that essentially is broken down THC. So it loses its intoxicating capacity, but it seems to retain its sedative capacity. So you, CBN in combination works well for a lot of people. Um, a little bit depends on your sleep, reason for not sleeping. If it's a lot of anxiety or pain, CBD is probably likely to be a good part of it. If it's just more you need to kind of wind your body system down, um, again, that indica THC or might be best. Um, and then often using other, a lot of products have other sleep focused compounds in them, which might add to the benefits. So you might have a product that's got some indica focused THC, a little bit of CBD, but maybe also a little melatonin or valerian, passion flower, things that can also help with sleep. So it's a lot of it's really finding that right kind of combination. I'll, I'll, I'll let me and Martha touch on what they've seen at their stores. Penny? Yeah, I would, uh, again, CBN is something that I've heard anecdotally a lot of people, my fiance um, actually uses CBN patches, which we do sell. Um, they're Mary's Medicinal brand, um, and they seem to work very well. Like I said, um, the strategy that um, I've heard my friends and my fiance use is they buy these patches, they'll cut them into four smaller patches so they get more bang for their buck, and then they put them on the bottom of their foot before they um, fall asleep. Though I will say um, it is really important to consider, like Dr. Gordon said, why you are experiencing some trouble falling asleep, because that might um, be able to lead you to different products that um, may be something we didn't mention here. So again, I really recommend either um, talking to, to your bud tender at a dispensary or even reaching out to Leaf 411 um, and really discuss this deeply with um, a physician. Martha, anything you'd like to add? I mean, yeah, just to echo what uh, both of these two experts already said, using CBD and THC in combination with other plant medicines or botanicals can really be effective for people 
we hear great feedback all the time on products like 1906 Midnight, which is combining low dose THC and CBD with other plant medicines like Corydalis root, which is very effective for a lot of people. Chiba Chews makes a great product now that's CBN and melatonin based. So I would just say to people kind of uh, don't be afraid to experiment with some other cannabinoids and some products that have varying ingredients to give you the effect you're looking for. In addition to focusing on, you know, whether you're having an issue falling asleep or staying asleep. That's one of the questions we usually ask people when they mention insomnia is, you know, what seems to be the issue for you? And then going to, um, you know, some sort of, of route that way. So, yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Um, this is an interesting question. Many elderly people have strong values of the era of thinking that marijuana is a stepping stone to hard drugs and that a person should just say no. As a result, they are strongly against the use of cannabis products. What approach can we use to ask them to consider using it for pain relief or other medical conditions? Martha, you want to start us off with that one? Absolutely. You know, for us, we see all the time that personal testimonials make the biggest difference. It is really easy to write off certain ideas or ways of thinking if you don't have that connection to it. But once you or someone that you love, a friend or a family member has a personal experience with an aspect of cannabis that enhances their life, it really starts to shift people's opinions and get them to sort of open their mind a little bit on, you know, what could be possible with this plant and the different ways that it's being used now. It's not the same old, you know, reefer that people uh, are thinking of from back in the day. There's a lot of science behind the products now. And so, yeah, I would say talk to the people that you love, talk to family members, friends, people in your community that have had interactions with this plant and these products, and you will probably be surprised what you hear. Penny, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, um, I definitely agree with Martha's um, thoughts there. And I also would add, um, you know, we're in America where the just say no uh, mentality really has um, been the norm for many, many years. However, like I said at the top of my presentation, um, just because we haven't studied it here in America does not mean that the research does not exist. So in addition to um, having these personal testimonies, you know, there are, there is a wealth of research that you could look into. And again, if you want help synthesizing any research or you want some um, scientific resources, I'm always here. Um, you can always contact me. Um, but yeah, so that, that's what I have to add. Dr. Gordon, anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, I think it's really, when you're really trying to, so to speak, convince a, an individual, a one-on-one, -on -one, maybe a friend or a family person, really just understanding where they're coming from and, and how they, kind of how they learn. So if there's someone who's like me, wants all the facts, wants the science, you know, is very analytical, give them the facts, give them the science. It's, it's pretty hard not to listen to lectures and read the science on cannabis and, and not have those myths and stereotypes be broken. Uh, other people, as Mart said, really, they just want to know the personal experience and like, wow, that's, that was your experience? Oh, I, I didn't understand that. So it's really just understanding what's giving them fear and, and then giving them the stories and the facts to, to help change that. Um, and, and just know brainwashing is effective. So we've all been brainwashed uh, for, for 80 years, basically. So uh, you just got to give people time and space to, to kind of accept the, the facts that are really there. Thanks so much. Um, you know, we all love our pets. Um, and uh, a question came in about uh, CBD for dogs or other pets. Um, uh, Dr. Gordon, why don't you get us started on that one? Because there, I know there's people out there thinking about their pets as well. Sure. Well, I, I will comment more as a pet owner than a, <laughs> than a medical professional in this situation, since uh, I don't really review the veterinary literature. I do know there is growing amounts of veterinary literature on CB, um, and both in its safety and its, its efficacy, but I can't quote it or, or point you to specific studies, but I have seen some talks and talked to other veterinarians. So I do believe if you look in science is starting to support it. Um, I know personally, we have a, 
a little 20 pound uh, guy and, and with partially torn ACL, um, who we're not gonna do surgery with. And whenever he starts limping, we give him a combination of uh, high CBD extract with some turmeric and some fish oil. And within days, limping gone. And sometimes we'll give it for a few months just for maintenance and he does great with it. Certainly know a lot of people who use CBD for anxiety with their pets. Um, for fireworks or for uh, other things that tends to cause dogs anxiety. Um, dogs have a higher concentration of essentially THC receptors or CB1 receptors. So they're a little bit more sensitive to THC than even humans might be. So you, it doesn't mean you can't again use small amounts of THC, but you wanna keep those levels as, as low as possible with your, your pets. And I'd say that's kind of where, where my knowledge base is there. Penny, anything that you'd like to add on on the question about use of CBD for dogs or other pets? You know, I, I have not um, looked into the research myself, but I do know that it is trending. We are starting to see a lot of dispensaries carry pet specific products. Um, it's pretty funny because uh, me and my dog actually share a little CBD tincture. It's just um, CBD. Uh, so, and he's like an 85 pound monster. So he gets he gets some hip dysplasia and hip pain um, a lot of the time. And it is really incredible to see. Um, I know that it's just a personal anecdote, but it's it's like night and day as far as his pain tolerance. Um, there are some days he doesn't get off of the couch for hours if you don't give him his CBD. And it's like, it's very sad to see. So I, it's becoming more acceptable. You can also um, find these products more increasingly in the dispensaries as well. So if you're shopping for yourself, maybe pick something up for your little Pooch, but that's all I have to add. Martha, you've probably got experience with this, so I'll turn it to you as well. Yeah, definitely. At Ajoya, we carry two products that we recommend all the time for people to use with their pets, whether it be for pain or anxiety. Uh, one is a product by a company called Iovia. It is a tincture. It's a 20 to 1 CBD to THC tincture. So very high in CBD, very low in THC. And that liquid you can add to treats or food. Um, it's really easy to you know, add it into their routine. And then there's also another tincture by a company called Sweet Mary Jane that has CBD in addition to THCA. So that is um, an unactivated version of THC. So you're not gonna have any psychoactive effects from that, just some of the benefits. So two different products with some different ingredients that you can try depending on what sort of issues you're looking to treat. Excellent, thank you. Um, another question, uh, Janet says, I had a medical card which recently expired. I found it difficult to find medical only stores that require a card. Um, what are your thoughts and pros and cons about medical cards versus non-medical uh, marijuana uh, dispensaries? Martha, you want to start us off? Sure. You know, there's, it's really personal at this point. The main difference in products you're going to see um, in a medical store versus a recreational or retail store are the edibles. Um, you know, for recreational, edibles are capped at 100 milligrams per package, where on the medical side, you can get up to, we carry up to a thousand milligram packages of edibles. So for patients dealing with cancer or some really serious chronic issues that need very high dose daily products, a medical license can be effective. Um, you're not gonna really notice a difference between the flower or concentrates, the more smokable products between the medical and the recreational side. You're just gonna save a little bit of money on the, the tax by having your medical license. So. Um, depending on what type of products you need and what conditions you have or are looking to treat, that would direct you um, on whether a medical license would be beneficial. Penny, any experience with this or want to add anything? Yeah, sure. I am actually one of those people who began with my medical card and it expired and I decided not to um, update it myself. But that, again, it was just a personal decision. I didn't find myself needing those very high concentrations in edibles. Um, and I can find all of the products that I want, um, you know, on the recreational side. Um, I will say that the benefit of having your medical card, I think that um, 
having a physician that you do speak to about your cannabis use and maybe you can discuss um, the benefits or any negative negative side effects that you are seeing. Um, having a point person, um, especially when you're getting into cannabis and, and you're just starting out trying to find what works for you, I think it's really great to have a point person um, that is a physician and can uh, speak a little bit to the quality of your products um, and what else you should be trying if you don't see the benefits that you um, want from products that you have tried. Outstanding. Dr. Gordon, anything you'd like to add uh, regarding medical versus uh, uh, other other dispensary options? Yeah, well, I mean, I think the, fir the first really big take-home point is there's, there's no difference in quality. Um, you know, a rec product is not less tested or less safe or, or less beneficial um, than a medical product. Medical and rec are just legal political definitions. So um, I think that's the take on point. If you're just going into a recreational store and you have knowledge and you know what you want or you feel comfortable with the information you're getting, again, the quality is just fine. I, I think the value of, of a med card beyond the little bit of cost savings is, is, is again, as, as Penny just alluded to, if you don't really kind of know what you want, what you're doing, um, especially you have complex health issues, obviously having a, a medical professional to to kind of that um, can kind of get your starting point a little bit better. Cannabis is always going to be a little bit of a find what's best for you, but if you can get a starting closer to what your end point is going to be, it takes less time. And, and, and so I think there's value there. And, and then thankfully, we've got resources. So often people will use this LEAF 411 that I mentioned, that's a free service to anybody so they may talk to them and decide after speaking with them, yeah, I think I have enough knowledge to go into a recreational store and just purchase on my own. And then if they're struggling or they're finding um, challenges getting the right solution, then maybe they'll, uh, they'll come in and get a med card. Or maybe it's, again, personal over time. You, you already know what you're doing. Your products are working, but you just want to save a little money or you want that kind of um, confirmation that you, you are using it for medical use, maybe if you go to other states down the road or things of that nature. So again, pros and cons, I think the bottom line is if you need more education, it's worth getting a med card and talking to someone who can give you guidance. But if you feel you're educated enough and, and you've gotten the guidance you need, uh, it's great to just start on the rec side as well. Okay, I'm going to go into my Alan Ludden mode here for password. We've only got about six minutes, so we're going to go into the lightning round here. So we're going to ask some questions quickly, and I'll, I'll ask a specific individual, and then we'll move on as quickly as we can so we make sure we get most of these answered. Um, this one has to do with topicals. Uh, I believe it, has, it was mentioned that topicals reach the nerve endings just under the skin. Does this mean that deep muscle or joint pain would not be effectively would not effectively be treated by topicals. So I'll go to Dr. Gordon on that one. Yeah, and generally the deeper the problem, the less valuable a topical is gonna to be. So like a hip arthritis, I wouldn't find a topical to be valuable or treating the pain of a degenerative disc at the disc level wouldn't be valuable. Some topicals are formulated to penetrate deeper. We call them transdermals and it's a little broader of a topic, but in general, think superficial issues, tendonitis, hand, wrist arthritis. Some people get benefit in the knees, but some don't. Um, but again, generally think superficial and topical with the exception of a few unique products. Thank you. Um, what should I expect from my first visit to a dispensary, Martha? I think that really depends on, depends on what dispensary you're going to. There's a wide range of types of facilities these days, so I think really vetting your options and doing your research before you come through the door is very valuable. I can speak to the quality of service that we provide at Ajoya. You know, we strive to be an ex exceptional place that provides knowledge and service above what the industry standard currently is. Um, but again, I would say do your research before you go in, um, call ahead, look at their website, look at the types of products they're carrying. Um, a lot of it can be kind of scary and foreign in the beginning. So I think calling is probably the best option and then just being brave and heading on in. Come see us at Ajoya. Excellent. 
Um, question about sleep apnea. Is there any products that you're aware of that potentially could help sleep apnea? So I'll turn it to Penny and then anybody else that knows maybe something more about this or feels like they want to add anything, they can jump in. Um, so I'm totally clear on the um, physiological issues that lead to sleep apnea. So uh, Dr. Gordon might be able to field this one a little bit better. Um, I do recommend, you know, again, with the sleep, uh, we're seeing a lot of people have really great benefits from CBN products. So um, that might be a good place to start. But um, if it's something else going on, um, like muscular or anything deeper, um, again, I don't really know the physio physiology of uh, sleep apnea. Um, then CBD products might also be uh, pretty successful. That might be one of the times where you go in and you try one product that doesn't work, but you find another uh, product with a different, high, a higher concentration of a different cannabinoid that does help you. So it might be one of those ones where you will have to make a couple of trips to the dispensary to kind of figure that one out. Okay, Dr. Gordon, this one is a little bit more medical. So you wanna add anything about sleep apnea? Yeah, the research, um, unfortunately, this is again our, our limitations with our, our legality issues here in the state. So we have research, definitely THC has been shown in some studies to be effective um, in helping patients with sleep apnea, probably related to um, some of the muscle relaxation and reducing the obstruction um, that occurs. The products you can find in a dispensary today, we can't say there's specific research on those individual products. Um, for sleep apnea, again, that's our, our, our legal restrictions here. But typically the standard products you would try for sleep in general um, that we talked about, that would still be where you'd start um, with, with sleep apnea being the primary condition. It's important to know no cannabis product is going to slow down or stop your breathing like an opioid or a benzodiazepine would. So you're never going to exacerbate a problem by, by causing yourself not to breathe or slow down your breathing. Excellent. Um, what products are best to manage very specific areas of arthritis, for example, a toe joint, um, or is it just best to take up with LEAF 411? So uh, uh, anybody can jump in on this one. Uh, Martha, you want to say anything about uh, arthritis if you've got some experience with it? Yeah, totally. We hear um, from people that topicals can be effective on those. Like Dr. Gordon mentioned, though, it depends on the specific area and how deep the issue is you're really looking to target. Um, topicals are a great entry product, um, easy to apply, easy to dose. And then if that doesn't work, moving on to a tincture or a low dose ingestible product would be my uh, opinion. Excellent. Um, this is a, a more of a technical question. This, this person says, I understand that CBD is almost inert. Uh, if there isn't a little bit of THC and ideally the full plant, can 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 one of you address this? And yeah, I'll ask, I, go ahead, Dr. Gordon. Yeah, I would say inert. I wouldn't is not the term I would use. CBD, even completely by itself, in you know 99.9 percent .9 pure form, absolutely has medical activities. In fact, we've got a FDA approved prescription medicine now that is purely CBD. Um, for seizures in kids, and there's plenty of research showing pure CBD showing medical benefits. So it's not inert without THC. This concept that THC activates CBD is kind of, again, another myth out there. It's that small amounts of THC and all those other compounds that Penny talked about have benefits in very low amounts. So when you combine CBD with the, these other medicines, even in very small amounts, the effect again tends to be synergistic and greater. So it's not that CBD is inactive, it's just that you often don't need as much CBD when you use it in combination with these other compounds. Excellent, and I'll let Martha answer our last question because I know people are questioning this, is it, better, is it, is it, is it okay to order online or is there a dramatic benefit to going to a dispensary? So I'll let you, I'll let you answer that question. I think there are pros and cons to both and not to sound like a broken record, but it's a really personal decision for you. Um, if you are confident in what you know and what you're looking for, ordering online can be a great way to save time and speed up your visit when you're in the store, especially with all the COVID um, things going on now. But again, there's nothing quite like a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a knowledgeable 
um, sales consultant like the people at Ajoya. So whether it be coming into the store or doing one of our virtual one on one consultations via a zoom call like this, there's a lot of benefit, especially for the newcomers to cannabis. Well, I know I speak for everybody that was on this, uh, that listened to this presentation that uh, uh, we had three people here that are that are extraordinarily knowledgeable and were extremely helpful uh, to everyone uh, that was listening today. Uh, Penny Comis, thank you so much. Dr. Dave Gordon, um, thank you. And Martha Lucas, you guys were all terrific. Um, and I wish you all well. And thank you so much for uh, for leading this presentation.